We need this message today. We need unity in the body of Christ. There is so much division, so much much backbiting, so much fighting, so much hate. One denomination hates the other because they say you don't get it right. Another denomination hates the other. And oh, there's just, it's so much. It's so, so much fighting. And I, I wonder, I wonder in my mind, when I see the division among denominations, because let's talk about that first. So do they think in heaven that there is going to be one neighborhood for this denomination, another neighborhood for this denomination? Or do they each believe that they're the only ones that's going to be in heaven and nobody from any other denomination is going to be there? And then there's even fighting amongst the denominations. No, we got it right. No, we got it right. There's, there's fighting amongst church people in the same church. Fighting, bickering. The enemy is tearing us apart from the inside out. And we are allowing it to happen. We are so busy fighting each other that the devil has waltzed right into the church and taken a seat on the front pew and does whatever he wants to do. He has brought in weak, anemic messages that are twisted, that are half-truths, that are full-blown lies, that are flowing out of churches because we have been too busy fighting each other to stop him. And the whole time, we are pompous, prideful, and arrogant and say, we have it right and nobody else does. The church needs humility. The church needs checked. (laughs) And the church needs to fall on its knees and repent. That's what we need to be doing in the church. Instead of pointing fingers at each other, every single one of us needs to be on our face before God repenting and walking in humility, humbling ourselves before him. But we're too busy fighting each other. We're too busy being prideful and saying, nah, we're right. They have absolutely nothing to offer. We got it and they don't. They're wrong. We don't even pause to think maybe we're the ones that's wrong. Maybe we're the ones that's missed something. And if it's a non-salvation issue, who cares? Who cares? Who cares what version of the Bible you read? Who cares if you're pre-trib, post-trib, no-trib? Who cares? That is not saving souls. What is saving souls is people who are willing to walk in humility and walk in the fear of the Lord and preach the gospel unapologetically, wrapped in love, and who are willing to allow the Holy Spirit to break down every area of pride, arrogance, unteachability, and walk in the fruit of the Spirit. That's what we should be seeking. All of this other stuff is of the devil. The devil is destroying our churches from the inside out. He is eating us alive. There are casualties everywhere we look and we're allowing it to happen. Every time we fight with each other, every single time we are allowing it to happen. Every time we engage, we are the problem. Every single time. When we set under ministries that engage, we are the problem. When we refuse to confront sin and deception and false doctrine because we're too worried about being right, we're too worried about being the in group, we're the problem. The house of God needs to stop looking at everybody else and we need to turn the mirror on ourselves and fix us before we attempt to fix anybody or anything else. How are we ever going to reach the lost if we can't even get along with each other? Why would the lost want anything to do with us? When they step back and they see us on social media tearing each other apart, because that's what they see. When they walk into our churches and all they can hear is the backbiting and the gossiping and the hate, Why would they ever want to be part of us? What would we possibly offer to them? We can't even love each other. How are we going to love the lost? 